Father, we thank you for Christ. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the blood of the Lamb. Thank you for the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, because you are mighty. Thank you because you are strong and great and powerful within us. This day, Lord, we pray mountains before your people will roll away in Jesus' name. And we'll stand on the ground of faith. And as we stand on that ground of faith, Lord, we pray nothing will be able to stand before us in Jesus' name. Confirm your word in every life today. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. You can see that we're reading from Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17, looking at verse 20. And Jesus said unto them, Why did he say something to them? Because they asked a question. And Jesus said unto them, What was the situation? They had actually experienced failure. And they were surprised when that same problem, that same difficulty or challenge was brought to the Lord Jesus Christ at the snap of a finger of the fingers the problem was solved it surprised them that's why they asked the question in verse 19 then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said why could not we cast him out that question why in your life you must have had chance to have asked why why this situation in my life why the disciples prayed but there was no answer why the believers and the disciples of today you have prayed as well confronting this mountain in the family Confronting this difficulty on your job. Confronting this situation in your relationship. And you wished things were better. And things were not better. And then you began to ask the question in your mind. Why? That's exactly the same situation that the disciples found themselves. Why couldn't we? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, If ye have faith, as a grain of mustard seed, Ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hands to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. I've read that many times, and you have heard that many times. I need to tell you something now. There are mountains that are removed by faith. There are mountains that are removed by love. There are some mountains that will never move away without love. Love is stronger than force. There are some mountains force will never remove. And the world has tasted that. There is a war going on now, you know. In that part of the world where the greatest power on earth, the greatest force on earth is confronting that mountain with force. There are losses on both sides whenever there is force. And yet the mountain we want to remove never gets away by force. 
It, go, it goes deeper and higher and broader and greater force deepens our problem. There are mountains that will never go away by force. Faith is greater. Faith is higher. Faith is mightier than force. And now abides faith, hope, love. And the greatest of them is love. There are some mountains you don't even have to talk to them when there is love. And the mountains just vanish away when there is love. But now we're considering the power of faith that moves mountains. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily, certainly, assuredly, I say unto you, that ye, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hands to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. I pray that day will come in your life when nothing will be impossible unto you. In Mark chapter 11, Mark chapter 11, Verse 22, and Jesus answering says unto them, Have faith in God. Those four words, have faith in God. Have the God kind of faith. Have faith in God. Because that is the solution to a lot of problems. That whosoever shall say unto this mountain, whosoever. Of course, you know, sometimes when you read whosoever in the Bible, whosoever is broad and it covers the whole world. But there are other times you read whosoever in the Bible. And whosoever is a little bit restricted and limited. You have never heard that, have you? That who's, when you read whosoever, that like whosoever believeth on him will not perish but have everlasting life. That whosoever is very wide and very broad, covering the whole world. But this whosoever, whosoever shall say, this whosoever is a little bit restricted and limited. Let me show you. Verse 25. And when you stand praying, forgive. If you have ought against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, here we are. The restriction of whosoever. If you do not forgive, Neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. You see, verse 26, help us to understand verse 23. That if we're carrying around bitterness and hatred and malice and animosity and mitty in our hearts, we are disqualified from the whosoever of verse 23. The whosoever there then is limited by verse 25 and verse 26 whosoever actually that brings us again to that love look at galatians chapter 5 galatians chapter 5 verse 6 for in jesus christ Neither circumcision availeth anything, nor circumcision, but faith which walketh by love. Faith which walketh by love. Faith 
minus love is weak. Faith minus a peaceful relationship with your neighbor is weak. Faith and fasting and prayer minus love is important. Faith which worketh by love. That's why Jesus, you have to understand the words of Jesus. That's why he said, when you stand praying, yes, you need faith, but you need love. Consideration for your fellow brother, for your fellow sister, for your neighbor. So that your faith will not have anything to limit it, to restrict it, to destroy it. We're back to Mark chapter 11, verse 23. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. The power of faith that moves mountains. Three points. Number one, recognizing mountains of difficulties in the family. Recognizing mountains of difficulties in the family. Number two. Rejecting mountains of discouragement through faithfulness. Rejecting mountains of discouragement through faithfulness. Number three, rejecting mountains of death by faith. Number one, recognizing mountains of difficulty in the family. Matthew chapter 17 again, we're looking at verse 14. The problem here that made Jesus to pronounce what he said was actually difficulty in the family. Help, there was a family. And they had just this only son. And they had a problem in that family, a difficulty in that family, a challenge in that family that waged them down, that oppressed the mind of the father, the mother, of everybody in the family difficulty in the family. Is there a difficulty in your family? That's the, that's the mountain Jesus was talking about. Is there a problem in your family? That's the mountain Jesus was talking about. Is there a challenge and insurmountable obstacle in your family? That's the mountain Jesus was talking about. Look inward and look around. And look at daddy and mommy and every one of the children. Is there something that bothers you in that family? That's the difficulty. That's the mountain. It says in Matthew chapter 17 verse 14. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man, kneeling down to him say, and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son. For he is lunatic, for he is mad. There are some people that are referred to as mad, or that's imaginary, as just the insinuation of people saying you are mad. They say some people have partial madness. Maybe that is true, maybe it's just insinuation. But this one is for real. He was a lunatic. The father said so, and so vexed. For all times he falleth into the fire, and ought into the water. Truly, really, this one falling into the water, falling into the fire, hurting himself. He couldn't be doing that deliberately. He was mad. The only child in the family, the only son in the family, mad. That's the difficulty. That's a mountain of difficulty in the family. 
And it says, And I brought him to thy disciples. And he could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? How long shall I endure your little faith, your unbelief? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil. The devil is rebuked in your family. The demon is rebuked in your family. And in all your circumstances, the devil is rebuked in Jesus' name. And it departed out of him. The word came out of Jesus. And the moment the word came out of Jesus, that devil, that demon came out of that child. No matter how long your difficulty, your challenge has been, I declare you free in the name of Jesus. And the child was cured from that very hour. Look at your time. This very hour, the Lord has set you free. Free in your soul and free in your spirit and free in your family. All those mountains, they are gone in Jesus' name. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart. Privately. And he said, we must understand this. Well, once you know the reason for this, why could not we, we in the plural, Jesus had gone to the mountain top, the Mount of Transfiguration with James, John, and Peter, and the nine of them remained. And it says, maybe I should say eight of them, because you know Jesus was, a Judas was with them in the physical but his mind was not worth them he was just looking at them but the nine if you counted if you did head count you had nine but if you do heart count you'll count eight you know it's unfortunate when the head count is more than the heart count if you counted judas was then you spoil the matter. Nine of them, if you do head count. But if you remove Judas because his mind was on money, his mind was not on healing anybody, delivering anybody, helping anybody. His mind was on how much money can he have? Judas is carried. I pray he will not be in your midst. And that's when you come to pray to remove the mountains. I pray Judas will not be part of your team. But you see, the, all these eight people with sincerity and heart and faith and everything they could muster. They prayed and they said, why could we not cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. And then he said, Because verily, certainly, I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hands to yonder place, and it shall remove. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. Nothing shall be impossible unto you. Nothing shall be impossible unto you. That's verse 20. Verse 21. How be it? This kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. We generally don't reach that verse with verse 20. The Lord is saying, you must count your faith more important than your food. You must want to have more faith, not more food. And the believers of today, they want mountains to go. They want difficulties to dissolve. 
They want problems to leave. But they put more emphasis on food than on their face. If you were speaking to some people on face, and your talk on face, developing their faith, will get into the time of their food. They lose interest. And they say, look at your time. Food is more important than faith. If you want to help us, everything you want to say, but don't touch anything that will delay our food. And somebody has to tell you the truth. That how be it, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Moderate fasting, normal fasting, scriptural fasting, not the fasting to destroy your body and to destroy your life and to become useless to yourself, but fasting with forgiveness and love. Because fasting without forgiveness and love will also mean nothing. We have a lot of people that are fasting and there's enmity and hatred in their heart against the people they call their enemies. That kind of fasting too doesn't work. Love your enemies. Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good unto them that despisefully use you and persecute you and pray for them that hate you. That's what Jesus says. So we know fasting without love, fasting without forgiveness, that you will not work. How be it? This kind goes not out. Well, a prayer and fasting. But your own problem will go out today. The challenge will lead today in Jesus' name. Point number two. Rejecting mountains of discouragement through faithfulness. Rejecting mountains of discouragement through faithfulness. Discouragement sometimes can be so powerful and strong that you forget what you have. You know when you are discouraged? You forget where you are coming from. And you forget where you are going. All of a sudden, the discouragement blocks your view. Do I have, do I know some ministers of God that so God discouraged and they just threw up everything. They threw away their calling. And they threw away their opportunities. Do I know some families that just packed, the wife packed out and forgot all the various privileges she has in the family, discouragement. Do I know some children that run away from their home because of discouragement? Do I know some people in the church that will not come into the fellowship of the believers because of discouragement? Discouragement will make you to forget where you are coming from. Discouragement could make you to forget where you are going. This God may can make you to forget the healing covenant the Lord has with you. This God may can make you to forget all the promises and all the blessings, all the privileges, opportunities you have in the kingdom of God. Discouragement, what a mountain it is. But now today, we're going to remove all the mountains of discouragement in Jesus' name. Numbers chapter 21. Numbers chapter 21. I'm reading to you from verse 4. Numbers 21, verse 4. And he journeyed from Mount Or by the way of the Red Sea. Before I go on, let me explain that to you. The journey is the greatest journey they ever dreamt of to leave Egypt. That's a great experience. To leave captivity, that's a marvelous experience. And to leave slavery, where they had been in the cage of Egypt and Pharaoh for hundreds of years. What a great deliverance it was. And then they took their journey. And every step should be a step of joy. Every step should be a step of thanking God, praising God. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I honor you. Lord, I glorify you. 
what a journey this is out of captivity into canaan out of bondage into blessedness and breakthrough and then they should be thinking of where they're journeying to where they're moving to where they're going going to the land of promise and they should be singing when i get there when i get home when i get to the land flowing with milk and honey what a glory what joy it will be a great journey but discouragement made them to forget the delight and the joy in that journey you know that's what happens here we are now if you count your blessings one by one and you see what the lord has done he has saved you what a blessing he has sanctified you what a great blessing he has filled you with the holy ghost what a great blessing you have the name of jesus what a great blessing you have the blood of the lamb that redeemed you what a great blessing you have the promise of heaven new jerusalem where dwelleth righteousness what a great blessing you have precious and great promises that are given to you that you might become the partaker of the nature of god what a great blessing and then he says righteousness which you have is profitable for this life and profitable for the life to come what a great blessing this joy where strangers are pilgrims in this world and we're joining on to the land of promise but this commitment will make you to forget what you have you know sometimes i look at a great crowd like this and it is not it is not easy to find a great crowd like this and sometimes you have a great opportunity to come and preach a great crowd like this we just spend a lot of money to make publicity and to and to gather together all this great crowd for you if you are preaching here to come and preach too and then we you know all these uh, wonderful ushers are just standing there to just make the crowd to listen to you if you have opportunity to come and preach and then you know something happens in your district a little scene and then discouragement comes and you forget all these opportunities all these social security singers musicians that are you know cooperating with you to make you serve the people a great crowd like this this commitment comes and then you give up i don't want to be in the church again what do you want to do i want to go and start my own and it's only the voice of discouragement and then you go to start and you have five people and those five people they can you know they don't even know how to sing any good chorus they don't know how to you know say proper amen they're you know disgruntled five people and you are left what are you doing discouragement why don't you just count your blessings and see the good good things you have and throw the discouragement away and do not allow this coming to block your way let's come back to this verse, verse 4 numbers chapter 21 verse 4 and he journeyed from mount all by the way of the red sea i cannot go on until i tell you again about the red sea it has never happened to any group of people in any generation that they got to the brink of the red sea and the egyptian army the chariots were behind them and they cried unto the lord and moses cried unto the lord and god said moses why are you crying to me stretch out your rod and he stretched out his rod and the red sea parted and just divided before them and then with joy shouting and singing they went through the red sea and then the mightier nation the greater nation the fortified nation and the people that were armed to their teeth they tried to do the same thing they went into the red sea in the middle of the red sea the sea came back on them as moses stretched his rod and he swallowed them up drowned them and they all died pharaoh and all his chariots and they came to this other side of the red sea and they were singing to the lord and they forgot for God. 
spectacular miracle that had never happened before God. Something so great, so wonderful, so mighty, and they forgot because of discouragement. The children of Israel, they forgot the great thing the Lord has done as they came out of the Red Sea. Then it goes on, it says, to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. But they had manna that morning, and the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. There was a pillar of light before them, and a pillar of fire, and a pillar of cloud during the day, but the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. Discouragement is like a mountain standing before many people and will not allow them to move on. But we are moving on. We know the trick of the devil. The devil is saying, I cannot get them to steal. I cannot get them to cheat. They believe in holiness so much, I cannot get them to commit adultery or fornication. They will say, no. They resist me. And the devil is saying, how can I get these people? I cannot get them to worship idols. I cannot get them to, you know, bow down to Pharaoh. What can I do to make them give up? Oh yes, there's one tool that remains. In the armory of Satan, and that is discouragement. And when discouragement like that comes, people who have been strong in terms of temptation, people who have been standing even when they had great persecution, and they were standing, and nobody could drive them back from the kingdom of God. When discouragement comes, they collapse, they fall. They're crushed. It appears this mountain of discouragement has destroyed many more people than even the other big, big sins that you have been thinking about and you have been avoiding and overcoming. In First Samuel chapter 30, First Samuel chapter 30, verse 6, and David was greatly distressed. This is chapter 30. Chapter 17, you remember. This is our champion, the champion of faith. With the courage of faith. This is our champion with the confession of faith. This is our champion with the confidence of faith. This is the one that says, I come to you in the name of the Lord. This day I will take your head away from you. And the whole world will know that there is no God except in the land of Israel. This is our champion. Champions are defeated when discouragement comes. It's a mountain. And David was greatly distressed. For the people speak of stoning him. Because the soul of all the people was grieved. And every man, and every man for his son and for his daughter. But David encouraged himself in the Lord is God. That's how he got out of that predicament. David encouraged himself in the Lord. How did he encourage himself? Maybe he began to recite, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. And then he begins to say, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear evil, for thou art with me, thy rod, thy staff, and they comfort me. You spread the table before me in the presence of my enemies, and my cup runneth over. Surely, 
All this distress will pass. Surely, all this demand will pass. I, surely, goodness and mercy will follow me. How long? All the days of my life. All the days of my life. This is only one day out of 365. And even today, whatever is happening, let me stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Whatever is happening around you, whatever storm, whatever wind, whatever voice, whatever discouragement, whatever distress, whatever noise, whatever thunder, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. There are times you just stand still. Lord, I'm tired of fighting. Stand still. Lord, I'm tired of shouting. Stand still. Lord, I'm tired of struggling. Just stand still. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And just watch the Lord clear the cloud and clear the storm and stop the thunder and then quench and quell the raging storm he encouraged himself in the lord and then he said i will dwell in the house of the lord forever he said this is not my abiding place i'm still going beyond always think about your home Always think about heaven. Always think about where you will be on that final day. Rejecting the mountains of discouragement through faithfulness. Encourage themselves in the Lord. Point number three. Removing mountains of death by faith. You know sometimes the, the mountains that oppress us is the death we owe. And we're wondering... What can I do? For Samuel, chapter 22. For Samuel, chapter 22. I'm reading from verse 2. And everyone that was in distress, and everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was discontent, gathered themselves unto him, and he became a captain over them and there were we seeing about 400 men can you see the you know the people that came to david what a condition was have you noticed the three things they had number one distress number two death number three discontent and the people, they just said, our lives are useless. Mountains oppressing us. What can we do in life? What can we achieve in life? Everyone that was in distress. They looked at David. They must have been looking at him because of his history. Because of his, uh, of his attitude of being a champion. Everyone that was in distress, number one, and then number two in that verse two it says, and everyone that was in debt, their debts they could not pay. It was like mountain, they just gave up and surrendered themselves to David. And if those who are in debt will just come and surrender themselves to the son of David, to Jesus Christ, he will have mercy on us. And then everyone that was discontented gathered themselves unto him and he became their captain if you will just gather together with the lord today and let him become the captain of your salvation that the debt you owe today do you know that those debts are going to be paid i said those debts are going to be paid jesus will make a way and the debts will be paid in jesus name proverbs chapter 22 proverbs Chapter 22, verse 7. The rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. It's a great mountain. When we owe so much, we cannot pay. We become like slaves. We become like captives. And it's like every time we think about the debt, every time we think about the creditor that is the one we owe it's like our hearts will sink in verse 26 
Be not thou one of them that strike hands, and of them that are short teeth for debts. If thou hast nothing to pay, why should he take away thy bed from under thee? They take the necessities of life away from us. That makes us to actually groan under such kind of debt. But thank God for Jesus. He will pay everything for us. Psalm 102, verse 16 and verse 17. Psalm 102, verse 16. When the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. The Lord is appearing on your, on your behalf today. He will appear in his glory on your behalf. All these mountains, they are nothing. They are going to be rolled away. Your life will be free. Your family will be free. And in verse 17, he will regard the prayer of the destitute. And not despise their prayer. Whatever destitution, whatever problem, the Lord will solve the problem today. Second Kings chapter 4. Verse 1, now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be born men. This woman was a widow. Her husband was a man of God, a prophet. But the husband left behind a great debt. And the creditor came. And when the creditor came, the creditor says, where is my money? And the woman said, I'm a widow, a poor widow. I have nothing to pay. All right, I'll take your two sons. That's a mountain. He was going to take the two sons. And then they'll become slaves for the creditor to become bondmen. And then she came to the man of God, Elisha. Those tears will be wiped away. Those challenges, the Lord will solve them in Jesus' name. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, Thy handmaid has not anything in the house, save except a pot of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow the vessels prophet i told you i'm in trouble because my husband borrowed money now you want to get me to more trouble you tell me to go and borrow vessels listen with your heart not just with your ear you see sometimes when you are coming from a particular background and you know the height and the death of your problem and the reason why you got into problem and now you come to the man of god and he says this is what you do then you shake your head the same man of god preacher pastor leader i got into trouble just in this way and i'm telling you now that you should help me and you want to get me more into trouble. You know, it's like Joseph. Joseph got into trouble through dreams. And eventually was sold into Egypt because of his dream. Eventually got into the prison because of his dream. Not original dream. That's what sent him to prison. And now he got into the prison. He woke up in the morning and saw those two men. And then said, he looks sad. What's the problem with you today? We have had dreams. You know, some people, I don't want to hear about that. Please go your way. You know why I'm here? You know the problem that brought me here? Dreams. You know, I wish, you know, the Lord will interpret that to you in your heart. You know, I got into trouble because of this. And the Lord says, now rise up and do this. Say, Lord, that cannot be right. I got into trouble because of this. He said, tell me your dreams. And he told him, and he interpreted. 
I want the interpretation. One of the people, of those two people, the interpretation was bad. But Joseph, he was a faithful man. He still gave that bad interpretation. And then he said to the other one, that's a good interpretation. Remember me when you get to Pharaoh. And the fellow forgot him. And now Pharaoh had a dream. It was what got him into trouble that got him out of trouble. It's a paradox. You can't understand. It was what got him into trouble that got him out of trouble. Preacher, you got into trouble by preaching. It is that preaching that will still get you out of trouble. Preacher, you got into trouble by counseling. It is that same counseling that will get you out of trouble. Singers, you got into trouble by singing. It is that, that singing that will still get you out of trouble. Walker, you got into trouble by walking for God. Who would have rebuked you if you were just a member of the church, a nice member of the church? I don't want to get involved with church work. Leave me alone. I love this church. I'll keep on in this church. And then somebody put pressure on you. Be a walker. Be a walker. The coordinator would not have known you. The group coordinator would not have known you. And then, yes, okay, I'll be a worker. And you are a manager, a director. Where you are, and this group coordinator, you know, is you know, not even up to somebody working under you in your office. And then the way he talks to you. And then, you know, they said some things and they disciplined you. Unjustly. You got into trouble by working. And then you say, I'll never work anymore in this church. I'm through. I'll not leave the church. I'll stay in the church. You don't understand the paradox of promotion. You get into trouble by walking, and it is by that same walking you get out of trouble. I wish God would interpret it to you. You see, Elisha said unto the woman, Go borrow thee vessels abroad. Of all thy neighbors, empty vessels, borrow not a few. And when thou hast come in, Thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and thou shalt pour out into all the vessels, pour it out, whatever you have. That little oil, pour it out. That's what I'm telling you. That's what I'm telling you. It's not just faith alone. Love, love. Love will remove mountains of debt. Love. You have problems, still love. You have some challenges, still love. You have something oppressive, still love. And pour out your life, pour out your oil, pour out your anointing. Don't hurt that anointing oil. Don't cover up that anointing. I have so much disappointment, so much challenges, so much problem, so much misunderstanding. So much misrepresentation, so much persecution. I keep the oil. In fact, the oil is very small because of the persecution, the oppression. Pour it out. Because, you know, it's in pouring it out, this problem will be solved. You will pour out yourself. Just, just love people. Pour out. It may be greeting. Good morning. How are you? It may be just God bless you. It may be I'm praying for you. It may be just, just something that will cheer up your fellow brother. Even though you are in trouble yourself, you are out of trouble already. And then it says, And when thou art come, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons. And I shall pour out into all those vessels, and I shall set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons, who brought the vessels to her. And she, and she poured out. Sons, get involved. Get involved. This is not only mommy's problem. This is your problem. The creditor, the creditor is going to come for you. You know, sometimes the sons don't understand. They say, well, it's mommy that will solve the problem. See, if mommy does not solve the problem, the creditor will come for you. Will not come for mommy. It will come for you. And then put you as a slave. Get him up. Carry the porch. 
get him up, bring the pot, get him up as we are pouring it out, and then it's getting full young people, youth, children, get him up and carry the one that is full. Let's all join hands together, love and fellowship and faith. Because if the church has great anointing, it will flow everywhere, it will affect everyone. Get involved, get united together, and so that the outpouring of the oil will solve the problem for both mommy and the two sons, the whole family, the whole family of God. And then it says in verse 6, and it came to pass when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a pot. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more and the oil stage. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil and pay thy debt. This mountain of debt hanging on your neck, I cut it off from you in Jesus' name. And then, and leave thou and thy children of the rest. There's peace in your soul now. There's rest in your life. There's rest in your family. This mountain, whatever they are, they are going. Let's rise up and tell the Lord, it's going, it's going. Mountain of death, mountain of difficulty, mountain of discouragement, mountain of disease, mountain whatever they are, they are going. They are going. You are not made for mountains to oppress you. You are more precious to God than that. You are not made for death to weigh you down. You are more precious to God than that. You are a child of God. You are a servant of the Almighty God. You are walking in the vineyard of the Lord. You are not made for the devil to be tossing you here and there by death and discouragement. Your heart is not made for discouragement. It's made for the Savior, for the Lord. You are a precious child of God. Why will this mountain remain? Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. It's a beautiful day. It's a new day. Our mountains are going. Why don't you raise up your hand to the Lord? Hands of joy. Your hands are anointed. And your heart is also provided for. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because our mountains are gone in Jesus' name. I pray for every one of my brothers, every one of my sisters. I pray for all our children, our teenagers, our youth. Oh Lord, all the mountains in their lives, roll them away in Jesus' name. Mountains of difficulties, I command you, get out in Jesus' name. Mountains of discouragement, get away in Jesus' name. The disease, the sickness, the demonic oppression, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray you'll open the windows of heaven. Pour down your prosperity and success, abundance upon your people in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, all their debts are paid. And I pray they'll be free from every creditor from now on. And I pray they will go from abundance to abundance. From joy to joy. From glory to glory. And I pray that all the discouragement of the past will never come back again. That Lord, they now continue their journey in the joy of the Lord. Thank you Lord because I know you have answered. In Jesus name we pray. Tell your neighbor it is well. It is well. It's well with your family. It's well with your soul. It's well with your body. It's well with your business. From now on, it is well.